is considered the narrow, the narrow phase, which is uh, not smooth because we, the main criterion to distinguish the two narrow phases is the, uh, the fact uh, of being smooth. So the not smooth one with a sort of uh, S shape is called chaos normally. And the other one, the smooth one, it's called cos. But this is a uh, at least for me, a uh, reconstruction. And this, this reconstruction is not uh, a natural one. It comes from the reading of ancient sources, and in particular of volumes and some scholi, the scholiographic tradition. And scholiographic tradition and volumes are also uh, constructing uh, these fields. So we have at least uh, three different levels in order to come to this result. And uh, we, we can go to the problem, the, the very important passage. This is the passage for, that probably you, you know. This is the, the most cited passage, the most quoted passage when we talk about uh, the different phases of what we, we saw before. Uh, and the follows uh, in uh, book 9, in the first chapters regarding playing games. Explains what for him ancient Greek or classical Athens uh, did. And this is my translation. The way the knuckle unfolds usually has a numerical value, and this could be relatively easy. The one that shows the value of 1 is called the dog, and you can see that in, uh, in Greek. In the second line, while the opposite side of the antikainen is called chias. Chias. Kaikios juntos of oros. And this straw is called the chios. So the straw of the, of the island. So here we have, if you know the, 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 the basic element of the Nakamura games, you know that uh, the dog is very often conceived as a synonym of chaos, of chaos because both have, have this value of 1. So why Pollux tells us that uh, the, the, the side, the phase of 1, of dog, has on the opposite side the phase of chaos, which is always 1. So this is the main, the main problem. And uh, the, the word, uh, which is a bit uh, tricky, is this uh, participle antikainen, because uh, uh, starting from this, uh, this participle, we could say, and some, someone, had, uh, someone said in particular, Gerald Rolfs, also in the 60s, which was a great scholar in, uh, uh, in Italian dialectology. And he, he, so he, he told that this kind of uh, anti could be a sort of uh, uh, shortened part of, a, of, the, of, the, of an ancient rule that Pollux probably wrote. But you know that the text of Pollux is not uh, an, the original one. It was uh, uh, shortened, and uh, we have only a sort of, uh, we, we could say, uh, a bulk of information which were interpolated by other scholars like Arenas. And so he said probably he was speaking about another view, a very ancient view, which was uh, not more played, was not more in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the time of, uh, of Pollux. And this other view could refer to the fact that when someone made a throw with a knuckle, we don't have to uh, consider as relevant the phase which shows up, but that one which is hidden, which is on the opposite side, so the to anti And for this reason, he says, we could consider a throw as a, with a value of 1 also when we have not the chaos phase, but the opposite one. So, just to make uh, a bit clearer the thing, if we have an apple, we can throw the apple, and if we have the, uh, the, 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 the phase which normally has a six value, so the, the cos phase, we don't have to consider this one as relevant for the calculation, 
but the anti-gay ones on the, the, the face, which is on the ground. And in this case, the face to be considered is all, as all said by the one. And it could be called Kias and the show Kios. This is a very fascinating hypothesis. And the, 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 the main reason why Gerald Rolfs uh, uh, says that uh, comes from a, a sort of parity model. He says that the chance, so the fortune, I don't know how to translate, luck, probably, so the, term, uh, the French term chance, comes from a Latin word which is related to the practice of throwing knuckles and dice, in particular from the, term, the Latin term cadentia. So cadet and so to, to fall. And from this kind of uh, very old fashioned uh, philological uh, way of thinking, he says that uh, we can understand different tradition because his, uh, his main, uh, his main uh, concern was to explain why in uh, Asia Minor, in Greece, or in southern Italy, the, the same face had different values. So he said, in some kind of, uh, of places, this ancient rule uh, is, in, uh, is uh, currently used. So for this reason, we don't understand, because they use a different view. So not to consider the, 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 the face which shows up by the other, the other side. So I, I don't want to enter in this, uh, because I think it's uh, more a question of, uh, uh, of faith, because uh, we have no uh, testimonies about that. But what I wanted to do is to uh, try to understand if this uh, hypothesis by Gerald Rose could be a, a good one. And I started, uh, for example, uh, from this other text, which is all society when uh, one speaks uh, of uh, nothingness. This is the oldest passage speaking about uh, Nathan Bones uh, in a very wide uh, perspective. And it's uh, contained in the history of elements by Aristotle. And uh, if, you, uh, if you remember the, the passage by Pollux, there we had a sort of uh, distinct uh, discrimination of the faces. The white faces had a sort of morphological name, so the belly and the, the back. And the other one, so the narrow faces, had a orographical name, so the name of islands. And a lot of uh, uh, scholars uh, rely on uh, the, the most and the, the oldest passage, so the Aristotle passage, in order to prove this. But the problem is that this passage is uh, is not uh, is to be has to be considered in a, or at least has to be quoted in its uh, newest uh, edition which is this one, the edition by David Ball of Cambridge in 2002. And as you can see from the, 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 the words in bold, the, the mention of the orographical uh, names has disappeared. Because the text which is normally cited was a text um, reconstructed on only six manuscripts, and they, and they had uh, Instead of tam and ko, they had tam and ko, so the ko side, the ko space. And instead of the tad in skin, they had the kios set side. If we uh, take away this, uh, uh, this uh, what we could consider an error in the manuscript tradition, and we look really at the manuscripts, at the majority of manuscripts, Baum, Gottel, and Lilian Lutzon, chose to change the test because they considered uh, these two Kia and uh, uh, Ko as a, an interpolation, so something that occurred after. And, and so they came back to the original text, what they considered the original text. And the original text is uh, very, uh, how could we say, mm, in, uh, it's, uh, it is in a sort of uh, metaphorical discourse, which is uh, the same one as the, others, the other two sides, because the ischia and cola are anatomical or morphological terms. So we could have a sort of coherence of the four uh, phases. 
if we take away the orographic mode. And in this, uh, in this uh, translation, we put that all animals with knuckle bones have them in their hindlands. The knuckle bone is located vertically in the joint, the side of its arched back facing outwards, the side of its belly facing inwards, and till uh, this moment it's all okay because this is the traditional way of explaining. But then we could also continue this, uh, 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 this metaphor of a body. The, the flat sides, so the collar, are facing inwards, while those faces named after the flanks, ischia, and it could be the uh, S-shaped uh, part of our face, are facing outwards with the growth on top. The position of the animals in the old animal that possesses them is as the square. And this is so. This is not to say that uh, uh, we have to cite uh, we have to quote this text, but, but this text is uh, the, the newest, and it was uh, prepared after more than 60 years by philologists like Val and others who spent uh, all their lives on uh, Aristotle. And uh, this was this is thanks to Bernic. This is the explanation. This is uh, an astral, and this is about it. So I don't know if the, uh, in ancient, uh, in classical. Uh, Times they could conceive uh, an astragal, a body in the body, because and if we adopt the text by Baal, the Aristotelian text by Baal, we could have this kind of coherence. So all the four faces are body parts, not only two. If we take one, and uh, just to make, uh, just to give you another text which is always quoted, this is the the scoria in. Uh, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the dialogue by Plato, the Lysis. And here you have a very important distinction which the scholars makes, and probably others wanted to make or made, but we can't say that. That is, it makes a distinction between the faces of the macrimum on one side, and on the other side, he speaks about throws. And for him, cause and chaos are only relevant for the throws, not for the faces of the of the natural. And he says, as you can see, you play with four nathalons, and each individual nathalon has four ways of falling, which add up to seven on opposite sides, just like with dice. The nathalon has an opposite side, has an opposite side one of the, the one of the one, and the six on one side, while on the other side the three and the four are opposed. And in Greek you have the same word, antikendra, at the last part of the second. Hegei de antikendra, monada, kainixada. So he wants to stress the fact that he is speaking about the face, monas and the xas, the face with a one belly and the xas, the face with a six belly. And then it continues, eta triada cathedra. And then in the second part of the text, he explains the throws. So just to, to, to make clear that scholars are written to explain to people that don't know. So it, it, it's a sort of a pedagogical tool. The two and five are only passed into dance since they have six faces. Between the throws, the one that gives six was called cos. Of the two that gives six exceeds, while the one that gives one is called Kios. He has the dog. Kios, the kind of human. So he makes this distinction between throws and faces. And probably this distinction was still there in Polyps. But the problem with Polyps is that this text is not the original one. It was uh, shortened, interpolated, and so on. So in order to come back to the text of Polyps, and to give what I think the solution is, is simply to look at uh, the uh, discursive logic of this text. These are texts uh, that are addressed to an emperor and a sort of uh, uh, treatises on the pure or the canon of ethnic, ethnic language. So Pollux uh, chooses to make himself different from his uh, older scholars uh, uh, competitors, and in particular Philippus. Philippus considered only some kind of authors, 
for example, Aristophanes, but not Herodotus, for example, Demosthenes, but not Isocrates, as relevant to the acting, the pure like, acting language. Pollux makes something different. He says that also other tradition, so tradition coming from uh, uh, expert or technician, could enter the canon of acting language. And what, is it, what it makes here, I think, is just to give an alternative, to say that in other part of Greece, there is the chias, which is the, which is the, the part which we normally call chaos. So the chaos uh, borrows, so the, the throw which is uh, chaos, could also have the value of six. And why do I say that? Because there is another passage, and this is the last one, <laughs> where Bobbins, in, in the book seven, speaks about uh, all the throws, the maximum throws and the dozen throws. And he uses the same rhetorical strategies. He says, someone says, the majority says that, but the best solution is that. So what, what he tries to do is to go and to arrive at the best solution for the acting language. And in order to do this, to do that, he uh, does not behave uh, like Phineas, who says Aristophanes is good and Herodotus is bad, but, it, it, uh, but he tries to give alternatives and then to choose between the alternatives. And uh, you, as you can see in this text, you have all the lists, and uh, you can see some words like a gun, they call it also. So the, the, the kiosk, but there is someone who calls kiosk also canon or oinen, canon, which means the void throw, so the throw which has no value, or the oinen, which is a ionic term to, to say one. And then he continues to say, how the vectius, but the best one, so probably the, the, the best authors tell us to make this choice, etc. Et so I think that the, the, the solution to, uh, to this kind of uh, dilemma about why Olympus spoke about uh, uh, two different phases as having the same one level has to be found in the discursive logic of Olympus because otherwise it would be very difficult to, to give an answer because I tried to, to, to search for an answer in the modern ethnograph ethnographic uh, uh, examples, but there is no attestation of these rules. So these hidden face rules, it's sort of revenant uh, fantôme, which, is, uh, which was uh, considered as uh, uh, relevant by Gerard Rose and then has been uh, uh, sustained and repeated by other scholars, but I didn't find any kind of uh, good answer to this hypothesis. So for me, as a philologist, it would be better to go back to what was the logic of onomastic on than probably broaden the perspective. Thank you very much. So we have uh, Chios, but if you go to the other part of Greece, you will have Oine. And uh, all ancient Greek speakers uh, knew that Oine was a ionic term, not an active one, to say, to say one. Yes. And this is, in this kind of strategy by Bolus, I, I think that we could find uh, the answer mm -hmm. to the fact that he, uh, he wanted to say as much as he could mm -hmm. about ancient Greek language. And all that kind of uh, artists, others like Phineas, were stricter than him. But it's also a sort of a play of competition because, because they were competitors. Mm -hmm. 
for example, for the uh, rhetoric cathedra in Athens. So they have to make uh, sort of uh, advertising of their own uh, mm -hmm. way of, of working in order to, be, to get employed by the emperor. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, especially since the new edition of uh, the Aristotle uh, text uh, gives perhaps uh, new insights. But one would have uh, has to, uh, uh, just to just to resume. Well, the point is that obviously they, they distinguished between how to call this, the faces of the microphone and how to call the row. No, this is a, this is a difference. Mm -hmm. So the, the faces have certain names, and the role has also a name. Mm -hmm. uh, now the question is, and uh, Rolfs, he, all, he refers already to the discussion by Jüttner and Sittich uh, in the 1920s, who, uh, who started to discuss this, uh, this difference, which comes from, from the Pollux text. You know? He says uh, the one is usually called uh, Goos, and, uh, and the opposite side, uh, Chias, and Chios, and, 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 and the, the, the role, the role is called Chios. Um, and and, uh, and uh, the, the question was, why is he so complicated? With, uh, and why are the sources so complicated? With this? Because this comes from this difference between the faces, how the faces are named, and how the role is named. And now, uh, the question is, are, the, uh, are we, able to uh, resolve the problem uh, just looking up, uh, at the sources, at the written sources. One might also uh, try to uh, um, try to go back to the object itself, to the to the uh, to the microphone, and have a look at the microphone. And this is what uh, what you and Sittich in the twenties what they did. They said that um, the, when you roll the microphone, the difference between the microphone and the die is that the faces are uneven. Well, you know, the, 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 the cubic die, um, all the faces have the same size, and, uh, and so the, um, there's no, no difference in, in between the faces and the roll. But, but in the knuckle bone, since the faces are different, um, the, the outcome depends not on the face that you see once the, once the uh, knuckle bone comes to lie on the ground, but the outcome depends on the face where it comes to mind. And this is, the chances are different. So the, for example, the, the S-shaped, the S-shaped, uh, the, the S-shaped side is very, very precarious. The, uh, the knuckle bone does not like very much to, to lie on this side. So uh, he has a tendency to roll, roll over the side. This is why this um, one of the, and, and the opposite side, is less less problematic, but also this is why these two sides are so rare, and why they have uh, obviously, according to the Chorion, uh, to Platon, because they attributed the values one and six to these two sides because they are rare. Um, usually, the astrolog comes to lie on the broad sides, on the belly and the back, um, uh, and so this is where the idea comes from that perhaps uh, the, the the name of the row does not depend on the face you see, but on the face you do not see, the face uh, that the, 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 the microphone uh, lies on. And um, so when, this was the, the point, when, so when the, uh, the microphone lies on the, when it shows the core side, so it lies on the shield side, then the call is called shields. The, the role is called shields, mm -hmm. because it is, Calling, calling. Now, obviously, perhaps in, even in antiquity, uh, if this is true, even in antiquity, it seems that this was not universal. Uh, and one might also imagine that with the use uh, um, of dyes, uh, perhaps they, at a certain point, they started to call role according to the other facts. <laughs> And not any longer according to the to the law of face. This was the theory um, by uh, by Newton, by Newton and Sittich. This is because Ovid, you know, from Ovid, he says that there are where books uh, have been written um, about the values of the number bones. Obviously, it was complicated 
thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there was obviously some, this was not a uni, not just one general opinion or standard, uh, standard rule according to all this, uh, but obviously there were different systems. And this is why there, there were different proposals, suggestions, how to call these. Uh, these it's problems. the same situation that uh, Rolf explained. So he said uh, in the Ottoman Empire, they consider this space a different value uh, in comparison with uh, Greece. Yeah. In Samos, they have different values. Yes. So this is like a obvious passage. Yes. There were a lot of traditions. But what I, I don't understand is, well, I understand it very well because it's the product of a certain kind of uh, a German philology who wanted to explain something which uh, there is no, no text which uh, even uh, uh, hint at this problem. So I think that it is sort of elucubration of, because I, I can understand why Rawls, I can understand that this is also an, another history, so we want to demonstrate that the third chance comes from the, the rule, the, the rolling of the eyes of nations. And he says, uh, we have to see, we have to look at the phase, which is mm -hmm. Poland, so cadencia, chance. Well, I, I think they, uh, they, they refer to the Pollux phase. And it depends on how you, uh, how you understand the Pollux phase. The phase where he says, uh, yeah, usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. usually the one, usually the one uh, is called course or something like that. The opposite side is called Shias. And Chios is the, is the name of the, of the role. Now, of the role yeah. and the Kyon, when you have the Kyon. So when you see the Kyon, yeah. the, 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 the role is called Chios. But the, the point of uh, elaborating this kind of thing, I think that we should look at what this word anti means and how it is used in politics which kind of discourse politics constructs, because uh, we, can, we have all the kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, so anti is the opposite side. Yeah, but it, it is used in politics, yeah. as to say, there is also this. On the opposite side, others say, this is the... the, the ah, you think this is like this? Yeah. The other people say that it is... Yeah. Yeah. Because they say, all, for example, then, I probably I forgot to do that, okay. all the players, the majority says. So this is a, very, a kind of argumentation. He wants to say that he knows everything about throws in antiquity, mm -hmm. and he chooses. And, and the, the implicit meaning is that the other ones, so free because they're the strict artists, don't know the Greek language as I do, and so they only choose uh, the nice word uh, taken from Aristotle and that's all. But me, I know everything. And I can tell you that in ancient Greece there were different habits. Even though all the players, the best one, the majority of canon holders says that. So I think that it could be a good strategy, this one, but not considering mm -hmm. the, the, the logic, the internal logic of Pollux mm -hmm. explaining I think yeah, a bit uh, strange because it's not, uh, as I told you, it's not a register of things, it's no, a rhetorical yeah. piece where every word is chosen, even if we have a shortened uh, version of this text. So it's. Est-ce que vous avez une explication de, de la raison pour laquelle la seule de façon posée français? Non. Mm -hmm. No, because of the dice? Yeah. Is it because of the dice? That's one question. I mean, huh? did, did the structure of the dice um, is reproduced on the knuckle bone? And when yeah. do knuckle bones get these numerical values? This is also an question. When? For the for the No, because if you look at it, if we look at it, it's what is hidden. Dans ce cas-là, le fait que les deux classes opposées aient toujours la même somme, c'est important. Parce que dans un D, c'est pas important que les deux sommes opposées soient aient la même somme. Donc on pourrait imaginer que si finalement on s'y compte, c'est ce qui est caché, on est obligé d'avoir une relation entre les deux classes opposées qui soit toujours la même. Donc un invariant 
sur l'objet. Ouais. On pourrait imaginer que si les osselets sont mis avant le D, ben, le D reprend la tradition des osselets. Je ne sais pas. Hein. De toute façon, la logique, la logique de l'attribution la, des valeurs, n'est-ce pas euh, pour, euh, Ça a un sens. Pour, pour, pour le pour osselet, ça a un sens. Euh, parce que les deux faces qui, qui valent le plus et le moins, n'est-ce pas, sont les plus rares. Et normalement, elles tombent sur euh, les autres faces qui ont une valeur presque égale, n'est-ce pas, 3 et 4. Le ventre et le belly et le back, they can count 3 et 4. And the, there's a major difference between this result and the, and the small size, yeah. the 1 and 6. Um, and uh, so I think that this, this has a really uh, a certain logic which is true for the uh, as you, said, you might be saying, but for the dive it's completely uh, it's, uh, it's com doesn't matter uh, but at a, at, a certain, at a certain time in, in ancient Greece let's say in, in the Greek period the, the standard distribution the now the modern standard distribution was 6, 2, 5, 4 um, this was not yet the standard So there were different, uh, different possibilities of uh, putting, the, uh, uh, putting the numbers on the faces of the tie. It became a certain standard in Roman times. In Roman times, practically all the ties had this distribution. But in, in, in classical Greece, this was one option uh, among others. And yet, for choosing the seven, maybe, uh, I don't know, it, it, there is a lot of uh, uh, treatise uh, for the importance of number seven in the, by the Pythagorean. And then I was thinking that because we have always this problem with, uh, for a knuckle even uh, divination or games, and I was thinking about what is quite late, because it's macrobius that uh, um, speak about the importance of number seven and especially the combination five, two, uh, four, three, six, one, for uh, establishing a communication uh, uh, with the gods, and you have a, a whole uh, chapter on it. But seven was uh, uh, really one of the most uh, meaningful numbers in the quite a lot from uh, philosophical treatises, starting with the, the Pythagorean tradition. Maybe so that can be <laughs> a clue for choosing this sound. Close the triangle with mm. seven the most ancient uh, tradition. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, and then with the seven. Mm. But the, uh, in general, the, the idea to create uh, <laughs> opposites, create a harmony, you know, and to create a harmony between opposites, this is a typical classical thought. You find it in the classical art theory uh, in the 5th century, uh, 4th century. This is, uh, Um, an idea that makes this already, at least. Um, could you go back to the slide with Aristotle and describing the air hole position? Because, did you read it again? Mm -hmm. for, for what he's done, it, this might actually cause some problems with figuring out which sides are which. If the flat sides are facing inwards, only one flat side will face inwards. Mm -hmm. if, so, is this not correct? Yeah. So it would be possibly complicated the way we take which side of the if we're aligned on this to use it. This could be translation error, that my grade is not existent. But I do wonder if this is as a translation as opposed to the actual text. But you would have the way animals happen. You have the curved side is up and the 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 opposite side has it the concave wide side is down. One flat side. Will always face in towards the big line in the middle, and one will face out. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that will affect how we name the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but uh, with uh, mapping points and I saw there is a lot of uh, problem. <laughs> so I, I, did, I chose to uh, maintain the Greek, the Greek original, because, for example, not, not to change the translation over to the real anatomy, but because, for example, one a very interesting passage which I wanted to start, but I never done. I saw that say that human beings have no knuckle. <laughs> so you can understand which kind of uh, uh, knowledge of human bodies he has. So just to say that uh, I, I don't know how they uh, he saw uh, an animal, a uh, living animal, but uh, what, what was interesting for him probably it was uh, this kind of uh, description of their faces and not uh, this joint aspects, because probably 
it was uh, most likely that you know, what I know. But I prefer to translate it uh, with what's what is in the Greek in order to work. Yeah, yeah. But the description is correct. You know, this is the uh, uh, description. The face is mm -hmm. resembled an ear. They, they are instant. Yeah, the 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 yes, the rest of the artworks. Yes, but what are you saying? Yeah. It's, um, it's translated that both flat sides are facing out, as we said, which is, depending on that, isn't helpful. That's not true in a, in a real uh, yeah. time. Yeah. So this is that's 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 describing it. it. He's trying very well anatomically until that point when things are possibly for the diffusion of the two bases. Or sorry, before starting these passages, because I thought normally I read the lot of I saw it for other people. And uh, before starting this passage, I thought that I saw the new perfectly uh, animal and human anatomy. <laughs> and then when, when I when I saw that human beings have you know nothing. I have uh, some doubts, and then <laughs> you, can, uh, yeah, you, you can confirm this. It's interesting. Anything else to stop now? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Uh, I would just, uh, because Thomas Daniel is listening to us from uh, from Rennes, so near Rennes, uh, so in France, far away, and he had a question for Jérôme Gavin, and I will make a remark for him. It's about dyes and how um, regular they are or not. He has sampled a number with uh, unusual, uh, a Roman period, unusual configuration. So not one six, but other configuration. And one option, it, it can be used, it could be used for special games. But the question for Jérôme, uh, so I jumped in, in it. He, he was wondering whether Greek and Romans would could count without the abac. Est-ce que les Romains, Grecs et Romains pouvaient compter sans abac, mais en utilisant des jetons avec des chiffres, parce qu'il y en a beaucoup. Et donc il se demande, ça dit que les jetons trouvés dans la tombe d'un joueur comme euh, Stanway n'ont pas de chiffres. Et donc il se demande si il wonder si les counters avec un nombre ont à voir avec les counters avec les Grecs ou les Romains avec les counters avec les nombres ou seulement avec les lignes. Les chiffres, c'est des chiffres Je pense à aussi qu'il faut à des chiffres romains. Est-ce qu'on peut faire quelque chose avec ça au niveau calcul Et vous pouvez continuer la discussion après, c'est pas mal, hein, mais juste pour... Euh, and you probably you have some tools, so counters with numerals. Yeah. And uh, Thomas, who is not here, that was wondering whether they could be of any use for counting something. Are for gambling tokens. I don't know if this is accurate, but that is one theory that we have. And then I'll actually explain it again if we are using the gamble. So we have in Britain ones with an X, 10, and then 5, and 3. Mm -hmm. But that is one of our things, mostly for gambling. But there's one that we talked to Harlow had, that's a PO or IO with no value. So, well, and, well, yeah, some kind of retention. Mm -hmm. Bah, je peux m'imaginer par exemple euh, un, un, un bouton qui a chiffre 5, est-ce qu'il peut est qu prendre une place quelque part enfin, voilà. bah, Ce qui est étonnant, c'est qu'il y a, a Gilbert Dorian qui a été le pape euh, de l'envie. Il a utilisé des chiffres arabes sur des jetons, mais c'est un long. Alors après, on peut utiliser ça pour faire des marquages. Yeah, but it's Andrew who's, uh, who's presenting uh, a much bigger database than the one that we've been working on, but one that we think uh, has potential to answer. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 Uh, as the to answer a of questions about the social place of gaming in the ancient world, um, we'll certainly be adding our data to this database when we've got the final numbers, and we're happy that we've mentioned the final boards we're going to find. So, 
look forward to hearing more from Alessandro about uh, this very exciting new database. Thank you, Dean. <coughs> so, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you Veronica for the opportunity to be here today because it's, uh, this is the right occasion to show some different uh, approaches in mapping the diffusion of games. And So, <laughs> so it's the, the right occasion to show you some different uh, um, approaches in mapping the diffusion of games in the ancient world. Uh, the context uh, that I show you uh, are uh, different, so we will be different uh, are the methodologies, but the, um, the purpose remains the same to give uh, new tools uh, useful to understand better the cultural and the social value to the game in classical world. At the moment I deal with two different uh, works related to the game in antiquity. Uh, the first uh, deals with uh, the reconstruction of the ludic topography uh, and the social meaning of the game in Pompeii. The other one uh, deals with the development of the database, <coughs> database of ancient for games whose goal is uh, not only the possibility uh, to store a huge amount of data, but more widely to offer to the scientific community an efficient tool to study the ancient games by producing a distribution of maps. <coughs> so for my project in Pompeii, I'm using uh, QGIS. It is a GIS software in a geographic <coughs> system to visualize topographically the diffusion of game tools in the city. Uh, our JS software uh, allows us to geo all data placed in the demo. Game tools from Pompeii are only so-called uh, small finds, such as die, tessere, counters, knuckle bones, but we don't have uh, game tools. Probably they was made in perishable material, as good that uh, uh, have not been uh, preserved or uh, that have not been documented during the excavation. The marble slabs from the forum, a place where we would expect uh, to find many engraved uh, games, uh, have been taken during uh, the 18th century from the construction of the region of Caserta by Bernals. So we don't have any evidence of board uh, games. Uh, but uh, some inscription found in Pompeii mention the Collegium of La <coughs> the players of La Tumbui. So we know uh, that the board games uh, had to be uh, widespread, widespread in, uh, in the city. <coughs> with uh, with uh, JS, uh, I could create a map of the topography of, uh, of Pompeii. Uh, here um, um, you can see all the context in which have been found game tools. Uh, in, the, in this map uh, are placed all game uh, that I found in the storage room in Pompeii. Uh, here I will visualize uh, all the uh, context, even those from where only one game tools is attested. For example, one die, one tesser, one knuckle, and so on. Uh, a separate issue uh, deals with the glass, uh, glass counters, the, the interpretation of which as game tools is much debated and uncertain. For the, this reason, the context with, uh, with one or more glass counters without an association with other kind of game uh, um, don't appear in this map. And uh, now I'm working on this uh, question and I hope to be able to say something more about this topic in uh, the future. So, <clears throat> in the MEC, uh, there are uh, some evident uh, concentration of game in uh, some regions of the city, for example, in the first, in the fifth, in the ninth. But I think uh, that is due to the distortion of uh, our knowledge um, rather than uh, to concrete reasons. We have uh, to be careful uh, in approaching an archaeological context because uh, we normally think that the archaeological context is a picture for the last instant of life, uh, especially in Pompeii. 
about uh, starting from Pompeii, a broad theoretical debate has developed uh, about uh, which value we have to give to uh, an archaeological context. The debate uh, led the Pompeii premise. In the common sense, uh, Pompeii represented the perfect archaeological context that provides us a picture of the last moment of the uh, life in the city. We have to keep in mind the image, the, the image of the bread found inside the oven or the dog still uh, tied inside the door. But the reality is totally uh, different. Uh, for example, the structure of the city hasn't, hasn't been uh, immediate, but it takes many hours uh, during which the inhabitants have time to try escaping uh, from the city, taking away part of the household items. So what we found in Pompeii isn't a picture of the daily life, but, but a selection by the inhabitants in the past. That, uh, then uh, then <coughs> we know that before the eruption of 79 AD, there was uh, many uh, earthquakes, uh, for example in 62 AD, that have heavily damaged many public and private uh, structures in the, in the city. Many houses were still under restoration in the 69 AD, and in many cases we, have, uh, we can have uh, a distorted view of the domestic space because some areas was utilized, utilized uh, in different way compared to normal situation. For example, many tablini or oratory, normally the most prestigious place in the, of the house, was used uh, as a place for storage of uh, the building materials. And a perfect, a perfect example of it uh, by the villa uh, of Popeia in Brontis, where the columns from the castillo was dismantled and stored in the, in the atrium. There are uh, also uh, modern interferences that, uh, that may have disturbed the archaeological record. Uh, for example, the regular excavation, also the regular excavation. Over the time, the method of excavation is totally changed, and in the past, we have lost many uh, data, data. The excavation in Pompeii started in the 18th century under the Romans, and uh, we have uh, many problems with the quality of the documentation available. And this, uh, this concerns also the most recent excavation in the last uh, century. Another question is related to uh, with the conservation of archaeological material. The storage room of Pompeii has stored only a, a small part of all the objects found in Pompeii, mainly the most precious, uh, such as uh, a metal object, glass object, bone ivory object. Many others, uh, such as uh, rubble made pottery, <coughs> aren't uh, preserved. And for example, we have notice of many counters made for ceramics uh, cuttings that uh, today are uh, preserved in the storage room. A last problem deals with the numerous excavation carried out in the last de uh, decades uh, by many archaeological missions in different parts of the, the city. Uh, each mission uh, has a own uh, storage room not accessible to the other scholars. So it's possible to have a global view of uh, all objects found uh, in Pompeii. This broad uh, premise was necessary to show you what uh, are the problems related, related to our uh, research in Pompeii and uh, to stress uh, that the results are influenced by many factors. Keeping in mind these problems, uh, we can see that the majority of ludic items from Pompeii, uh, in Pompeii are from domestic spaces, followed by the workshop and the shop, uh, and shops, uh, Caupone, uh, after Caupone, uh, Popine and Thermopolia, uh, we can translate it as uh, bars, and finally by public spaces uh, as uh, theater, theater and uh, basilica. Same that the domestic the context was the most preferred space for gaming, but the game permeated all aspects of the daily life, as suggested by great diffusion of games in productive or commercial context, as workshops and the shops. It's not surprising the presence of game from uh, in Caupone, Popine, and Thermopolia, that in our mind are the most suitable place to play legal and illegal game. 
Public spaces seem to have been considered less suitable to carry out the activity, a situation that is clashing with the traditional image that we have about the public buildings, such as, such as, such as uh, basilica theaters, as crowded places and full uh, of players. Same, it seems that the space, uh, space was the preferred place where to play, or the inhabitants chose to play in specific space, like Campone, Trampolia, or Pile, dedicated to uh, uh, recreational activities. But it appears clear that uh, the ancient populations played as soon as they had the possibility, as suggested by numerous objects from the productive spaces. As told you in the first map, uh, are showed all the context from where are ludic uh, items. Uh, while is it uh, is it likely uh, that all of these can be interpreted as testifying of ludic activities, in many cases we have a single element uh, that is not enough uh, to carry out ludic activities, except uh, for die or uh, <coughs> For this reason, I have uh, produced a second map in which I showed the context from where are uh, game set of the same typology, or uh, at least made by two different uh, typologies of the items. So, an uh, example, for example, a die, a counter, and a tortoise, that more probably can be interpreted as trace, trace of ludic uh, activities. We have some ludic mm -hmm. uh, from a different place in the, the city. Uh, <coughs> a third map shows, finally, a more strong ludic association with at least three different topologies of games that can be interpreted as game set. For example, from a house in the, uh, region, in the first region, we have uh, a set made by uh, a tester conformate, is uh, here in uh, Fish and uh, Black the Goose, uh, a tester Paralelibida, Paralelibida, is, and a tester Alexandrina, is. A uh, unique example of this kind of association from a domestic space, from a Roman order, in my view. <laughs> The maps allow us to focus the attention not only on the distribution of the games in the city, but also uh, on, a, uh, on some specific questions related to the material culture in Pompeii and more widely in the Roman world. For example, to face the complex debate about uh, fertility, a term conventionally used to mean the to mean dice shaker. In Pompeii, the word fritillus is used to indicate small pots, roughly uh, made the cylindrical or pyroform body. And for some scars, uh, the first typology can be interpreted as a dice shaker, for other, the second one has, has to be interpreted as a dice shaker, uh, as su suggested by iconographic evidence in Pompeii. For example, a couple of science, uh, uh, some frescoes from a uh, couple in, uh, it's evident that uh, the, the representation of uh, uh, the piriform uh, uh, technology of uh, fritillus, like in this case, the first one is uh, less clear the technology uh, used by the, uh, the players. <coughs> but many scholars uh, remain skeptical about the possibility to interpret this kind of object as dice shaker underlining that only this uh, decided proof would be found this object in association with other uh, game tools. Uh, the work in the storage room of Pompeii allowed me to identify some context where are associated the so-called fertility and ludic tools, confirming the hypothesis that this kind of object have been really involved in ludic activities. And uh, now I show you some uh, context. The first is the, from, the, from the house of Domus of the Jewish Polyus in the ninth um, region. Uh, at the, from the Arbutian Quadrobe, at the, located in the Christilium of the, the house, we found uh, one Pretillus and the nine bone dice. 
here in the DNA. So the difficulty is the piriform one. one. From the building theory, outside the city, it's a suburban uh, villa, uh, just outside the, of the wall of the city, uh, famous for the, uh, for the fresco. <coughs> from the productive, productive space uh, of the villa, from the tumbularium, is the, the wine press, uh, are two ball dice here in the, in the map. Uh, these uh, are some pages of the notebooks of Pompeii. We have uh, two, uh, two dice, one dice, uh, 40 uh, glass counters, uh, partially preserved, and two uh, fritini, so another big uh, uh, assemblage. And, uh, also in this case, we have uh, two uh, beautiful uh, fritini. In the <coughs> another context, in this case a political uh, context, uh, we have uh, other uh, association. Uh, for example, from uh, the Lonica of Stephanos, uh, is a tannery. Uh, from a broad wardrobe, a uh, wooden wardrobe, the, the main entrance of uh, the, the, the Lonica has been found. One fritillo, uh, two knuckle bones, one more die. Uh, five glass counters and 49 pottery and stone counters, not preserved in the storage room. Mm -hmm. And another uh, analysis on the other side, here in the right. From a workshop in the first region, in the room number nine of the buildings have been found, for example, for fertility, but of the, uh, another uh, typology, uh, no uh, uh, pyrophone, but a cylindrical one. And um, seven inscribed uh, tessere, uh, but only four preserved, and uh, six glass counter uh, not preserved in the storage room. So, another. Assemblage, but with a different kind of uh, uh, fritilli. In the <coughs> shop, in the, another shop in the first region, it's interesting because we have uh, one die, uh, two fritilli, uh, 20 glass counters, and uh, maybe another particular uh, type uh, of fritillo uh, found with, uh, inside uh, <coughs> seven glass counters. So, it's interesting because uh, we have uh, uh, maybe a fritillus with a morphology different uh, from which uh, generally considered uh, canonical, uh, and uh, it's evident that, that the fritillus can be used with a second function, for example, to contain glass counters. So, not only to throw the die, but uh, for a second uh, use. And uh, it's another very interesting uh, uh, context, uh, the house, uh, the domus of Stadio Service in, uh, in the first region. And in this case, it's very interesting because we have a, a fritillus, uh, the in particular shape, no uh, piriform, uh, one more die, and uh, 12 uh, elements of necklace. So it's interesting because uh, I show you this uh, context because I wanted to stress the difficulty to understand what is a game and what not. We have to keep in mind that the code used as, as a game tools object with a different primary function or vicinanza, used in analytic activities and uh, game pieces with a different purpose. Uh, for the so-called uh, free TV, it's evident that the, that the shape is, uh, isn't enough <coughs> to understand the function. And we can have the certainty that they were ludic items only by the association with the other uh, game tools. So, um, is a, a new perspective in the, in, the studio, in the study of uh, this kind of object and uh, in the uh, approach to the ludic context in Pompeii, but uh, in uh, general the, the ancient, uh, ancient world. So, uh, to conclude my, my speech, I'd like to speak uh, about Ludus uh, database, uh, a new tool for mapping ancient, ancient games, in particular the board games. 
and the moment uh, the database isn't uh, yet fully functional, but uh, today I'll briefly show you the structure uh, and what we can do in the future uh, with the database. So, in, uh, <coughs> sorry. in uh, each, each entry, new entry has the, the first part, the more descriptive, where, where we can insert information about the material, conservation state, dimension, dating, uh, storage room, uh, storage location, sorry, uh, and there is a space to insert the picture and the bibliography. For example, this is uh, the first part of the, the, the entry, uh, with the, the title, material, the description, description uh, a place for uh, given a, a date, a dimension, storage location, and uh, at least to um, insert a, a relief bibliography or uh, to um, update uh, some images. <coughs> we have decided uh, in the first part uh, to have uh, an approach more descriptive than uh, interpretative. So under the, uh, the voice morphology, uh, we can find uh, the many different uh, choices related to the physical description of the words. Uh, One question, can you modify mm -hmm. in the cat now? Yes, yes. So for instance, I'm thinking now, after what we have seen today, five lines with semicircle, where would mm -hmm. we are thinking? Yes, so we can add uh, voices. Uh, uh, yes, yes. semicircle seems to be relevant, but I don't know if it is here or somewhere else. Uh, we have the, the voice abacus, for example. Maybe. But it is it's possible to add new, yes. uh, new voices. Uh, and um, after, under the, the voice game, we can propose an identification <coughs> game with a game, if it's possible, we have many uh, solutions to, to choose. <coughs> and we, have, and we have also the possibility to give uh, to, to each entry the geographical coordinates, latitude and longitude, in order to reference them. And it's, it's very easy because we can obtain uh, the coordinates from the Google Maps. Uh, we have uh, here the uh, place of the coordinates, and the uh, Google Map is very easy because you can um, click a place and uh, you obtain here the uh, coordinates. Here we have longitude and latitude in the Google Map, and the same coordinates we can put inside the database here and here. So it's very, it's very easy to uh, have the coordinates. So, <coughs> uh, the Lutus database is a tool to storage many information um, about ancient world games, but one of the most useful purposes will be consist in the possibility to generate distribution maps combining different parameters, for example, typology, chronology, and so on. At the moment, uh, we have uh, uh, at the moment, it's uh, available only a static map based on the voices currently present in the database. As you can see, the most dense concentration of games are underlined by a strong color, in this case, orange. But by zooming <coughs> in a specific place, it's possible to localize the previous location of each object inserted in the database. In the future, it will be possible and will be impossible to generate the maps of distribution across the some parameters, such as typology, chronology, in order to have, for example, the chronic maps, and it will be possible also switch from a map to a satellite map. And uh, <coughs> to conclude, uh, from, from the GIS of Pompeii, to the database, Two different uh, software, but with the same uh, purpose, mapping redistribution of game in antiquity to give uh, the research new tools to understand better the social value and the, uh, culture, uh, the social and cultural value of the game, uh, of game in the past. Thank you very much.
I think it's quite interesting to combine this sort of effort, the, the two different scales of analysis, because we've worked at province level, and of course you've shown us something one step lower, so site level, and something a step above the whole empire. Um, I was going, to, I'd like to ask, um, one of the problems, of course, is issues with recording, because you know, one thing that we could be experienced for working on Britain as well is that simply some some places have really poor data and some places have better data. Um, are there any regions that you foresee it being really difficult to actually get any game boards for this for this database, or um, are there any places that you expect to be particularly openly represented kind of the opposite? Mm. So it's a uh, work in progress. So uh, we try to cover all the area and uh, all place, but uh, we have to um, think to the database to uh, tools, but it's not an uh, infallible tools. Is a uh, so uh, we have to improve uh, by the time, but it's uh, it's not uh, in the future you don't have a uh, um, complete results uh, and uh, is uh, is uh, the search is uh, so so we try to. Do our best, yeah. but uh, uh, it is a complex thing, I know, but um, uh, we try to collect uh, the, the major number of the, the game boards from the, the ash board. Mm -hmm. It's no simple, it's not probably it will, uh, yeah. it will be complete, but uh, it is uh, better than uh, nothing. <laughs> no, absolutely, I completely, I completely agree, uh, because we're sure that we've you know, been it's the same for the
And another advantage is that, as you see, it produces a map which is neutral. Mm -hmm. So we don't have problems of copyrights, of mm -hmm. uh, the proper GIS map. Yeah. As a um, collaborator, you have access to, uh, mm -hmm. to insight uh, mm -hmm. and, and to more material. But there is the option also to show, for instance, the pictures or not. You can make yes. them available open access or not. You, there is always a choice. So you can protect your work uh, and, as, uh, and have the tool because you, you see you can produce uh, results, yeah. but just the bubbles and not the, bu the picture. Yeah. And, and that flexibility is really important. Yes. Really mm -hmm. yeah, I was wondering Probably is a game. In, in other uh, 
So most of them are low, uh -huh. and they don't follow the typology of drink vessels or stored vessels from the same sites. So they've largely been called dice cups just because they fall outside of the crew materials and common typologies. But well, they could, I guess, look at the basis, just for, for, for storage, everyday storage jewelry or something like that. Yes. Um, I think it's something that could, some further research could be done on. And I think if someone would do it, would be terrible. I think we also have a few dice towers in Berlin, yes. and that is where we have been focus recently. There is, as far as I can think of, no big articles about our modern branch dice cups just because the contexts are so loose. But it, it, it could be something. Yeah, it could be something. And one of the enigma is that we have, we have no board game. No, no. no board game. So, uh, wait. <laughs> 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 so, not counting the floor almost, and then, yeah. Uh, For example, we have uh, this first cause with the uh, players, and it's second that the tabla in Georgia is Uh, in the Fulonica, this is a um, 
uh, is a um, space of work. Uh, so it's very common to find uh, uh, items uh, related to uh, space of uh, to, to, to work. Hmm? So I was thinking in terms of our conversation this morning that there are also places of waiting that if you were. But it, it's very dangerous because uh, uh, so we have uh, a distorted, distorted view of the uh, space inside the, the hall because the hall um, uh, always are uh, under restoration. So we think it's a cubicle, but no, it's a, uh, used for another uh, activity. So it's very, very dangerous. So uh, it's very dangerous to do try to uh, understand the, the place if, if you don't have all the information necessary. And, uh, but it's very really, uh, different uh, problems from the studio, from the entrance, from uh, um, uh, the, the um, uh, a place for workers. But uh, so we don't uh, have uh, a game from, for example, the Tabinum, is a more public space of the reformer, maybe, but, uh, but it's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, in the uh, in, uh, in work, yes. I think some of we don't have to consider a space of storage is not necessarily a space of use, and mm -hmm. vice versa. So when we're finding these things in a wardrobe, they're always not being used there, they're being carried out. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it's Using the public, having the form of space is the possibility that it helps display. But it's funny because inside the wardrobe of Pompeii, inside some is probably is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, full of uh, different uh, kind of object uh, to, uh, to do something uh, different, uh, to game, to play. It, it's very <laughs> a mess. And uh, it's funny because uh, this is a picture of the daily life because it is together inside. Uh, they put from the kitchen inside the, uh, the it's, uh, it's difficult, but uh, it's very fascinating uh, the view of the thing, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So let's, let's